and the Alan Border medalist for 2017, David Warner. Okay, congratulations. Um, when we spoke on the blue carpet before the awards, you think you hadn't done enough to win the medal. Is there a bit of surprise tonight with getting the award? Yeah, there was a bit of surprise. Um, you generally feel that when the test player of the year gets announced, they've probably got the, the upper hand. Um, you know, credit to Starkey, he played unbelievable through, um, you know, not just the, the summer, but in Sri Lanka to toil as hard as he did to take a couple of fifers there. And, <clears throat> you know, they weren't match winning performances, but they were fantastic from a bowler in those conditions and a fast bowler. And credit to him for getting test player of the year. And, um, you know, I think a bit of misfortune. I think he missed a couple of games during the one days. And, uh, you know, he's our, our main man with the ball um, in one day cricket. And, um, you know, he would have been disappointed to, to miss those one day games from an Australian cricket point of view. Totally not from a, an award winning point of view, that's for sure. Dave, congratulations. You went Thanks. from being a, um, I suppose, someone pigeonholed as a T20 player to becoming a, a good quality test batsman. You went from being someone who wasn't a great one-day international cricketer to someone who's prolific in it now. Is going away to foreign conditions like India and scoring runs over there, is that sort of the, the next step or the, the next goal? Yeah, look, <clears throat> when it comes to 2020 international cricket, it's quite challenging because you only play one game here and there. And as you know, the game's about momentum. And if you come in for one, don't play for another six months, it's quite challenging. So that's where the 2020 leagues are great, where you've got a lot of back-to-back -back cricket. Um, you know, that's like the IPL this year, um, <clears throat> leading into the one-day Champions Trophy. So playing in conditions like India, um, especially, and, and obviously Sri Lanka, recent tour, um, it holds you in good stead when you come back to playing on um, fast and bouncy wickets, um, you know, because the bowlers sometimes don't pitch it up um, as often um, and you can sort of, you know, sit on the back foot a little bit and, and play your game. Um, where in the subcontinent, you're actually getting on the front foot majority of the time until the spinners come on and then you actually got to manipulate the field and pick the boundary. So I've learned a hell of a lot um, in the last, I think it's nine years now, I've been back to India in a row. Um, I thoroughly enjoy playing cricket over there. It's an amazing place um, and they live and breathe cricket and, and I'm excited to go back there with the Australian test team to, um, you know, to take on the Indians. You're, not, you're obviously <coughs> not going to um, New Zealand, going to Dubai instead. Is that extra time and you talked about continuity, is that, that going to help you, you think? Yeah, look, I think I'm flying on the 5th so I've got a bit of time at home which is great. Um, it's awesome that we get to go there and, and practice and, and train as hard as we can to get used to those conditions. Um, you know, we're going to be working our backsides off um, physically and, and you know, mentally as well before we even think about um, playing the game of cricket. Um, that's what gets you mentally tough and, and ready for those conditions. Um, it's, not, it's not the wickets, it's not the opposition, your conditions, um, you know, you've got the, the heat. Um, we've, we've been there before and pl players that have been in India know how hard it is just to overcome that, let alone the cricket itself. So you know, we've got to acclimatise, um, you know, we'll, we'll do that um, in due course. But uh, look, I know that everyone that's been selected in that team is prepared and ready. Uh, David, maybe your test numbers during the middle of the year weren't as good as you would have liked, but do you feel like you're in as good a form as you've ever been playing cricket in all forms of the game? Yeah, I, I didn't really feel out of form at all um, this summer. It was just... One of those things where I remember Mike Hussey saying to me, I think he went, he went through like a sort of a rough patch, which is very rare for Mike Hussey, it's probably five games. But um, he said to me, I'm hitting them so well in the nets, but not necessarily is that going to correlate and go out into the wicket with you, uh, out to the, the centre of wicket. So for me, it was about keep memorising what he was saying to me, keep working hard um, in the nets and, and sort of not think about it too much when you get out in the middle and just play your game and back yourself. And that was always in the back of my mind um, when I was in the nets, just I was crunching him in the nets and then was sort of getting either a poor dismissal like Hobart or I was a bit, a bit unlucky. Um, but that's the game. And I walked off with a smile. Um, I probably threw the toys out the cot in Sri Lanka. I learned a lot about myself um, in Sri Lanka. Um, and that probably held me in good stead coming towards this summer. I knew a big one was around the corner. I was disappointed in Perth. Um, you know, it was, yeah, the way I got out was probably ugly, but you know, if I had my time again, I'll still be playing the same shot um, and hopefully we'll go for four. But um, you know, for me, it's about knuckling down and knowing, knowing my game. And I think you look at the last couple of games against Pakistan, I really nailed it. And to, to be in this form in the one day cricket <clears throat> and now the test, test matches, 
um, leading into India. It's 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 a great thing for for myself personally, but for us as a team, the start is the most important with it with the bat. And I'm just in a great position at the moment, so hopefully I can keep continuing that form come India. Dave, how given your one day form, how hesitant were you to be rested from New Zealand, and how much do you think it's going to help you for for India? Look, uh, for me. For me, it was about you know getting mentally um, freshened up. Um, not that I would have not gone out there and given my 100%, but I, I felt probably the first two, especially one day, is this this series um, with Pakistan. I felt quite not lazy. It's just my feet weren't moving. Um, sometimes I don't move at all, but they were just quite fatigued. I think um, you know we're we're running ragged in the outfield as well. We're giving everything we can, and I run as hard as I can for every ball. <laughs> it doesn't matter where it is. I'm, I'm always trying to compete against that ball to stop it from going to the boundary. So that does take its toll. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, Cricket Australia l allowing me to get over some little niggles and, and having a little bit of rest at home to, to get me ready for, for India. And there's no excuses there. <clears throat> Dave, you're just the fourth multiple winner now of the Allen Border medal at Clark and um, Watson and Ponting. That's pretty elite company to have joined. What does that mean to you? Yeah, it's obviously luscious company and it's, it's an honour and a privilege. Um, you know, the great players that have won this before me, it's, it's amazing to follow in their footsteps and I've played with a couple, I've, I've watched a lot of them on TV. Um, it's fantastic to be a part of that, that group. Um, you know, as we all as we all do as cricketers, we don't we don't play the game to, to earn the accolades like this. It's about going out there and winning and, and making sure we've got the support of our fans and, and making sure cricket is Australia's number one sport and headlining around um, the world that you know Australia is on, on the radar and uh, we can keep continuing to strive for number one in all three formats. Dave, how much do you have to change as a batsman going from you know some of the bouncy wickets over here? to going over in India with completely different conditions? <clears throat> it's about a lot of the guys work on their their game itself um, with with actually trying to score. Um, we don't necessarily think about, and if I'm talking one day stuff per se, it's it's more how we're going to, you know, sort of take it to the bowlers and apply that pressure <coughs> back on them before they dictate you. And... Um, from bouncy to, to slow wickets, the difference is they're going to pitch the ball up probably a little bit more um, on the bouncy wickets. And obviously the slow wickets, they dig it in probably short of a length, so it actually skids on. So then that obviously brings in a pull shot coming from Australia, and sometimes that's scooting through and bowling, you'll get an LB. So you've got to be, in the back of your mind, you've just got to think getting forward. And in, in Australia, predominantly, I'm always thinking my weight's on my back foot and then lunge on the front foot if I see it. And that's just you know, adaptation, you know, we have to actually learn to adapt. And that's one big thing that Smithy always talks about. <clears throat>